Hello. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about a method that is widely known in econometrics uh, and used to be almost synonymous with causal identification in econometrics, uh, but is not used quite as much these days for reasons we'll get into in the next video. But it is still a key and important part of econometrics and does still see a lot of use, and that is instrumental variables. So what is instrumental variables? Instrumental variables is a method whereby we're trying to replicate the sort of experimentiness of a, red, of a randomized experiment, except that we are going to be using data from the real world. The only difference is that we're going to try to find something in the world that does our randomization for us. We're going to try to find a variable in the real world that does some randomization naturally. And so this is what we might call part of the natural experiment uh, part of econometrics, right? We're going to look for something that does some sort of rolling of the dice, some sort of thing that seems random-like uh, and gives us some variation in our treatment, which we can then use to get a causal effect on our outcome variable. And the, the sort of intuition behind it is like this. So we have a treatment. We have a treatment variable, and it varies for all sorts of of reasons. So let's say that we're trying to get the effect of being in the military on your uh, on your on your earnings after you are after you're a little bit a little bit older, right? So does being in the military make you earn more because you learn all sorts of skills, uh, or does it make you earn less because you were in the military as opposed to getting job training uh, during that time or going to college or something like that? So uh, there's a lot of reasons why that treatment might vary. Right? Some people might go into the military because they have political opinions about it. Some people might go into the military because they got nothing else to do. Some people might go into the military because they're from a military family. Some people might go into the military because they got a lot of patriotism. Lots of different reasons for why somebody might go into the military. And now a lot of the reasons, as you can probably imagine already, are going to be endogenous. Right? A lot of the reasons why somebody might go into the military are strongly related to all kinds of backdoor stuff that are also related to your earnings later on on, right? And so we obviously can't just look at the relationship between being in the military and your earnings and expect that to be a causal effect. But now the key thing about instrumental variables is it says, yeah, okay, great. Yeah, some of the reasons why you might go into the military are endogenous, but maybe some of them aren't. And if we can find one that's not, if we can find even just one reason why people go into the military that has nothing to do uh, with anything else that leads to your outcome, well, let's just isolate that one reason. Let's just pick out that one reason. And we're only going to allow variation driven by that one reason. And then that is going to give us our random assignment, right? So we need to look for a reason why treatment varies that has no back doors. That's the key here. We can sort of see how this is related to what you might get in a randomized experiment, right? In a random experiment, again, you have a treatment that's going to be related to the outcome and also have a lot of back doors. Uh, how do you solve this in an experiment? Well, you randomize it. You randomize the experiment. You randomize the treatment so that some people get it and randomly other people don't. Among the people who are in your experiment, well, for them, treatment is completely unrelated to all those backdoor things. It's only related to your randomization. So we just need to find something in the real world that works like that, and then we can isolate that explanation which gives us a, a thing that looks like this. The diagram is pretty much the exact same, except we've replaced an actual randomization with some form of instrument. You can actually run an, a, a randomized experiment using instrumental variables, and the logic works exactly the same. So that is our goal. We need to find a reason why the treatment varies that itself has no back doors. Then, once we find that reason, we are going to isolate just the variation in treatment that is driven by that reason. It's sort of the opposite of controlling for a variable, right? What do we do when we control for a variable? We find something that's on a back door between our treatment and our outcome, and we look for all the variation in our treatment that's explained by that variable, and we remove it. And then we look for all the variation in our outcome that's explained by that variable, and we remove that too. And then what's left over is the part of the relationship that has nothing to do with that, that variable that we controlled for, right? Well, we don't want to do that. We don't want to get rid of this variation. We want to say this is the only variation that counts because this is the variation that occurs because of the exogenous reason, right? Uh, this is the variation that occurs because of our randomization. And just as in an experiment, you wouldn't randomize people in your, in your experiment and then also bring in a bunch of other people who weren't randomized. No, you toss those people out uh, and you just leave people who are in your experiment. Same thing here. We're going to take just the part of the variation uh, in X and Y that is explained by our instrument, and we're going to ignore everything else. Here's how it works graphically if we have a binary instrument. Here we just have some, some data here. There's a positive relationship between them. Uh, but we are going to say we are only going to focus on the part of the variation that is explained by our instrument. We're going to get rid of all the other variation. We're just going to shrink it down to just those points. And then the slope 
between just the part that is explained uh, by the variation, right? We have one average x and y, or we have one average x and y for people who do have the instrument equal to one, and one average x and y for people who have the instrument equal to zero. Those are the only points that count because we only care about the part that is explained by the instrument. And then we look for the relationship between x and y just between those two points, and that is our effect of interest. So let's go back to the military example. So there's a classic paper uh, looking at the effect of military on your earnings that says, okay, we need a reason why people go into the military where that particular reason is exogenous. And what they settled on was the Vietnam draft. Now, in the Vietnam draft, you know, everybody, all men had to be in the draft, or almost all men had to be in the draft, um, but, uh, but the order in which you got drafted was based on a randomized order, uh, based on your birthday. And so if you are randomly assigned to be drafted very early, then you're going to be a lot more likely to go into the military. So there's lots of reasons why people go into the military. There are lots of people why people join the military during a war like Vietnam, but all those reasons have back doors, patriotism, military family, political opinions, whatever. But the order of your birthday, it's randomly assigned by the military. That has nothing to do with anything. And so if we isolate just the variation that's d driven by your birth date, well, that's how it works, right? So what are we going to do? We're going to find out what part of the variation in going to the military is explained by your birth date. We're going to isolate just that. We're going to see what part of the variation in your outcome, in your earnings, is explained by your birth date. Isolate just that. And then we're going to look at the relationship between just those explained parts. And it might not just be two points because there's more than two birthdays, um, but that is the idea of what we're doing. We can do this with a process called two-stage least squares. So in two-stage least squares, we have two stages of regression. In the first stage, we predict our treatment variable using our instrument. Uh, so and whatever other controls we have that are exogenous. Uh, so we regress our treatment variable on the instrument and our other variables. And then we use the predicted values from that first stage. Uh, and then we put those in the second stage. So we're using the predicted values, meaning we are only using the variation in the treatment that is explained by the instrument and our other exogenous variables. So we're only using those predicted values, right? which means that the variation in our predicted value of x, which we're actually gonna use down here, has two things going into it. It has the instrument, right, because we use the instrument to predict it, and it has all of our control variables. Now these control variables could have could be endogenous, right? They could be related to both our, or they, they could be backdoor, they could be on back doors, right? So they're gonna be related to our treatment, but we control for them in the second stage, right? So if we're controlling for this part of the variation, all we're left over in here is the part that is explained by z. So we are isolating just the effect of the parts of x that come from z. So when we do this, we are regressing whether you got into the military on your birth date, and we're gonna say how much of your military experience is explained by your birth date, we're gonna isolate just that part. And then we're gonna use that to predict y. So we're gonna take just the part that is explained by z, and we're gonna use that to explain y. Uh, which means that we're also, of course, just taking the part of y that is explained by z as well. So this coefficient beta 1 right here is going to give us the causal effect of x, and in particular, it's going to give us something called a local average treatment effect. Uh, where we're not getting the effect of x among everybody. We're, we're getting an effect that more reflects people who are driven strongly by the instrument itself, because that's the variation that we're using, right? If you went into the military because you had a military family and you were always going to go into the military and, you know, your birth date had nothing to do with it, then whatever the military does for you, I don't know. Right, because that's I'm not isolating that variation here. I'm saying that your variation doesn't count here. It's endogenous. I'm throwing it out, so I don't get you. I only get the people who probably would not have gone to the military if not for being drafted, but were, did go to the military because they got drafted because of their birth date. Right. So I'm isolating just part of the treatment effect. We call that the local average treatment effect. And the more strongly your treatment is affected by your instrument, the more strongly I'm going to count your effect. And so if, for example, being drafted has bad effects on your earnings, but going into the military when you're in a military family has good effects on your earnings, I'm going to get an estimate that it's bad. Okay? Uh, so that I'm, I'm focusing on the people who are driven by the instrument. So there's that to think of. There are two things that we need to definitely be true for this to work. And those uh, big assumptions are relevance and validity. And there's some other assumptions, we'll get to that next time. Um, but the big ones are relevance and validity. So what relevance is, relevance is that we have an actual effect of our instrument on our treatment variable. The instrument needs to actually predict the treatment variable in a strong way for this to work. Now, why is that? Well, what were we doing 
before, where we're basically saying we're going to isolate just the variation in x that's driven by z, and we're going to use that. Well, what if there isn't any x variation in x that's driven by z, right? Uh, what if, you know, it, instead of using something like your birthday that determines your, your, um, your draft order, we use something that maybe affects like one or two people, like a, a, a military billboard went up in Billings, Montana and convinced two people to join the army, right? Well, okay, that does that is something that probably would make you go into the army and and should probably doesn't have any back doors, uh, so it's probably exogenous. But also, like, come on, you know, there's not a lot of variation in going to the military that's explained by that billboard. And so, even though that instrument might work in the sense that there's no back doors on it, there's so little variation on it, we have nothing to work with. Uh, we're going to get a very noisy estimate because we're going to be trying to get an effect from basically no variation, right? We're trying to compare those two people. Uh, and, and are basing our entire study on just those two people who were driven to go to the military by that billboard in Billings, Montana. The other assumption, and this is the hard one, is validity. We need to assume that there are actually no back doors between the instrument and our outcome, right? All of the effect of our instrument has to go through the treatment variable. There can't be really be any other way to get from our instrument to our outcome variable except going through the treatment. No, there can be actually, but we need to control for all the other ways. The important thing to remember for the instrumental variable is that we are not making it any easier on ourselves, right? The process that we had to go through for identifying a treatment effect by controlling for stuff, right? Of thinking, here's our treatment, here's our outcome, here's all the back doors. I need to control for every single back door in order to identify the effect. That's what we used to do, right? Before we figured out some of these natural experiment effects. Well, we still have to do that exact same process, right? Nothing's changed about the process. We still have to control for enough stuff to close every single back door. The only thing that's changed is which variable we're doing it for. Instead of closing every back door between the treatment and the outcome, we are now closing every back door between the instrument and the outcome, right? Keeping in mind that if it goes from instrument to treatment, it's not a back door, okay? So we still have to make sure that we are identifying the effect of the instrument on the outcome. A good sort of uh, rule of thumb for this is if you try to imagine that your instrument is the treatment, can you identify the effect of the instrument on the outcome directly? If you can't do that, then your instrument is not valid. There is some sort of back door, and your instrumental variables estimate doesn't work. All right, that's it for the introduction to instrumental variables. I'll talk a little bit more about some restrictions and difficulties with instrumental variables in the next video. Thank you.